for all the people I asked, hey, were you aware that there was a time when I was trying to become a rapper? And nobody remembers it. Nobody. I know. <laughs> I remember. Oh, dude, Be yeah. Real remembers. Be Real be recorded real. a track. Real dude, did, did, didn't we do something? We, we did, did a track something. together, yeah. dude. Yeah. And, and, uh, <laughs> and, dude, your verse on that fucking track we recorded was so dope. It was Thank so you. fucking dope. And just, like, everything I did on the track was just awful. <laughs> But uh, I didn't want to give you no wax shit. <laughs> Dude, you did it, man. He's, like, he's doing a redemption album pretty soon. I'm right. trying to do it. I'm trying to like get organized to do uh, some redemption shit. And like whatever. Just make it fun and funny. Let you me know? know. Dude. Let me know. Dude, I remember <laughs> the, the, the track that you and I recorded, it was called If I Died Today. And the the whole like the, the the whole gist of it was, you know what, fuck it. If I died today, I killed it, man. I'm stuck I'm stuck on, on 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 what I accomplished, right. what I was. And dude, ah, <laughs> uh, wait, but that dude, I'm just trying to remember. Dude, Quick, when 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 Steve's writing a rapper, I I, I always ask. This I was question. just really, I really just appreciated the shit out of that thing. Oh, you no worries, to do man. that, man. Ah, uh, you know we're boys, man. I had to give you that fire <laughs> all day. <laughs> so cool. When you're writing a song, what hits you first? I know it's different for everybody. Is it the lyrics, or do you have to hear the beat first? Well, some you know sometimes I'll get ideas without the beat. And I'll just sort of mentally store that away till till something comes along that complements that idea, like Rock Superstar, for instance. That was in my head for um, some years before we actually put that out. Years. Yes. And aren't you worried you're gonna forget it? No. Well, with something that is like um, that strikes you heavy, like you you know you know it's a good idea, you'll hold on to it and you'll remember it. And I was constantly like just waiting for the right music to happen. You know, mm -hmm. Muggs gave me many um, styles of, of, of beats and, and, and uh, you know, different options to write to, you know, throughout all the albums, you know, and what I wrote was basically what I felt when I heard the music, right? So that's the other way I write. I, when I listen to the music, the music speaks to me as to what I should be writing about or what the concept about or, or if it's just one of those rapper brag brag the shit you, you know brag about <laughs> yeah. yourself because mm -hmm. there's that too right but we've always tried to write cohesive songs that mean something and shit like that so i try to go where the beat takes me you yeah. know what i mean and but with with um songs like rock Stupor, superstar and there's a couple other ones but that was obviously the biggest one that i held in my head for a while um it wasn't until mugs came with that particular you know bed of music that you hear as the song now, um, where I felt like that's going to be great for this idea here. So I, I did that. And at first it was just rap superstar and Donnie Einer from Columbia records. He was, you know, um, one of the, one of the big wigs in the industry period says, I think you need some rock guitars on that. And we're like, Oh, okay. Cause you don't say no to Donnie. Hmm. And Muggs went and put the rock guitars, but then he had the foresight to put the orchestral parts on it and made it like, you know, it was like um, us, us being Led Zeppelin of hip hop in that and uh, with that song. That was our cashmere. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's 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 how we looked at it. Like, this is our cashmere. That's cool. And so that that was one of the ones I had in my head for years. Uh, you know, other stuff I came up with on the fly. You know, like, doc, like Dr. Green Thumb, for instance, uh, I got to the studio, heard that music, boom, Dr. Green Thumb, and I made that song in like 45 minutes, something shit. like that. What, what about the tune, is it American Psycho? Ooh. And yeah. was that with D12? Yeah, that was D12. That Dude, was, that, that fucking track is so yeah. fire, man. Yeah, they were killing it. Yeah, they, they had the idea, actually. They, they hit me up, and they were like, hey, we want you to do this chorus. Um... And they sort of give, gave me an idea of, of what the song was about and then like what they kind of wanted me to say, but like say it in my own, on my own terms, in my own way. And, and so that's that's what I did there. And I thought, man, that <laughs> it is a fucking tight <laughs> song when I hear it. I, I took it, I, I took that and went and did a, a mixtape and put a verse on it w with, with me and Emma. Right, okay, yeah. because I remember... 
like hearing it and then trying to look for it and i was like i couldn't find it yeah my, my the the one with my verse on it is is from one of my gunslinger mixtapes i had a that's vol- right yeah three that's- volumes i had three volumes uh there was uh gunslingers there was gunslingers fistful of dollars um a few dollars more and something else. It was all the Clint Eastwood right. run, right? You That's know? what the problem was, man. I'm glad yeah. we got to the bottom of that because I got to <laughs> dig up that track, man. I love it oh, so much. Oh, yeah. And then people started hitting me like, how did that not make the D12 record? I'm like, well, I did it after. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they only asked me for, for a chorus, so that's what I gave them. If I had the foresight to just send the verse and be like, hey, I sent this verse too, yeah. just in case, <laughs> right. remix style, but I didn't. I didn't do it. I didn't want to like impose it and them, you know, having to be like, oh, I don't know. I, mean, right. I know I what I did there, but I don't ever want to force my shit on someone. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't want it, cool. So instead of sending it, I just held on to it and used it for my mixtape and was like, yeah. fuck it, mm, nice. just go here. Dude, it's unbelievable. It seems like the shorter it takes you to write a song, the bigger the hit. Sometimes, sometimes you know, like because you're feeling something in that moment and you have a certain momentum it's coming from the universe yes it's coming from somewhere else it ain't coming from you when it's like that it's coming from somewhere else you know what i mean like for sure with green thumb because with with green thumb um it was a sketch i wrote for the radio show that i was hosting at the time because we, we were doing a friday night mix show eric bobo and myself called soul assassins radio there's a soul assassins radio now from dj mugs on on a Sirius XF, uh, XM, but before that, it was on 92.3, the beat FM here, when that was- Theo. This, yeah. Theo well, on the radio. Yes, and Julio G yeah. was also on this this uh, station, right? So I would write sketches. So our mix show was like a Saturday Night Live with mixes, because we would do all the voiceovers, myself, Bobo, and our, our uh, partner, Quasi, who was our production guy, and we'd get all other artists to do voiceovers in these sketches. And so we wrote one in a, in the sense of, you know, it being like a, infomercials were, were big at the time. Uh-huh. And so I wrote an infomercial style commercial for Dr. Green Thumb, a cultivator. And, you know, it was based off of me and my boys growing weed because we, we had always done that. We were pretty goddamn good at it. So, you know. <laughs> the nickname green thumb came from that because you know you would see nurseries out throughout los An- or southern california with that green thumb meaning you're good at growing weed yeah. right so that's the idea popped off from that sketch when i get to the studio and i hear that beat the sketch is in my mind on this beat like oh shit this is the song and i, I just start going in and uh, we end up using that sketch to that song yeah you know what i mean um so it all sort of just came together like out of nowhere but when i when i got to the studio and i heard that beat all the ideas for that song along with that sketch start rolling out and 45 minutes later it's laid and locked in and i think i laid it at 10 in the morning on a fucking thursday or something like that and mugs knew he was like this is the shit right here b's gonna fucking slay this right here and the funny thing about that song is that record company tried to get me to change it. They wanted me to do switch the lyrics and make it more like an insane in the brain part two or something like it. I said, no, I'm not going to change nothing. And we already got insane in the brain. And I'm like, why would I do that again? That would be redundant. I'm sticking with this. And they're like, ah, radio ain't going to play it, but okay. It's a great <laughs> song. And I'm, you know, to this day, I'm glad we stuck to our guns because it became one of our biggest songs in terms of our, our fan base, just that being one of the anthems. And it was a big a big hit in Europe, no less. We were tripping on that. And hmm. uh, it sort of made its way into the pantheon of top Cypress songs. So like, just as a, you know, to give you a an indication, right? So we play insane in the brain there's a pop that happens with that right people explode they go crazy it's nuts mosh pits and you know stage diving all that crap right fast forward to now we do when we do green thumb it's the same reaction and they didn't think that was going to happen they thought it was a waste of a song and for me that that was like 
it it was a f something that happened organically and it was the it was the luck of the day because who knew that that was going to become my cannabis brand yeah i had yeah. no clue you know we always envisioned you know being able to do this or that in the cannabis world but we didn't know when we didn't know how we didn't know what we were going to do we just knew we'd be a part of it somehow but boom that song became my entrance into you know the the cannabis industry that that's what was so special about that song that that's why i say it came from somewhere else right. because that song led me somewhere else mm. other than music it's called stevo's hot sauce for your butthole and if you go on amazon and type in stevo's hot sauce for your butthole and order yourself a bottle you'd be really helping me because right now we're ranked number 30 on all of amazon and if you buy a bottle we might go up the ladder and that would mean a lot so please get on Amazon and buy Stevo's hot sauce for your butthole. Yeah. Yeah, dude.